Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. And welcome to Meet at the Hotel Bar, the final episode of Series 2. After being tangled up in tabloid dramas, hitting the podcast charts, and unearthing some of the best kept touring stories you will ever hear in Series 1, we are back again, bigger and better. Who knew that was even possible? If you're new here, we are Freddie, JC, and Huss from the band Floors, a three piece indie pop band from London via Huddersfield. Since we started touring and traveling the globe, we realized that there's so many funny things that happen on and off stage, and so many stories that never get shared with the rest of the world. They just stay in the dressing rooms and tour buses of the bands and artists you love. Until now. In this podcast, we're lifting the lid on life on the road. And where better to meet up and tell those touring tales than a place every touring musician knows very well the trusty hotel bar. In today's episode, we met up with the multi-instrumentalist talent that is Zach from American pop rock band Hanson in a hotel bar in the Westminster Hotel in London. Hanson are probably best known for their smash hit song Mmm Bab and have been nominated for three Grammys, sold over 16 million records worldwide and May the 6th has even been declared Hanson Day in their hometown of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Listening back to this episode, it had me in stitches laughing and I hope it does the same for you too. Zach had so much energy and with three decades worth of tour stories, we somehow managed to cram them all into this episode. I couldn't think of a better way to finish series two. Stay tuned to hear stories of surviving stage invasions, what happens when 6,000 people turn up to a small performance in a mall, how to act when the legs of your drum kit break mid-song, forcing your kick drum to literally roll off stage, and what to do when presented with a decaying rotten apple <laughs> in a glass cage, which you apparently took a bite out of several years earlier. This is Zach from Hanson coming up on Meet at the Hotel Bar. Meet at the Hotel Bar. Yeah. Guys, yeah. let's not talk about this paper is, straws. I've got a problem with paper straws. <laughs> <laughs> um, Zach, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, glad to be here. We're currently in a hotel. I want, I want to say bar. It's well, like a hotel, almost foyer. It's I'd very say foyer, yeah. Very Rather boomy. Uh, the bar yeah. doesn't open for another forty minutes, so we're in the foyer. I, uh, I'm not sure whether to feel proud of them for not opening before noon as a sign of, you know, solidarity to mm-hmm. keep people from becoming alcoholics, or to be like, come on, guys, yeah. grow up and party a little. Yeah. yeah, they were cleaning it, so we know that they, you know, maybe they had very clean, oh, very shiny, but wow. yeah. Yeah. There was Henry the Hoovers everywhere and wet floor <laughs> signs, so not a vibe. Yeah, not at all. Uh, so, first question, yes. as always, what would you like to drink? Well, since it is before noon, I think we should just start with maybe a Coke. Okay, yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, four Cokes? Four Cokes. You know what, yeah. I might go diet, but otherwise. Ooh, diet four Coke. Cokes oh, is good, let's do it. Okay. Okay. Four Cokes. The, the Cokes have arrived. The that Cokes was quick. That was like fast service. Um, oh, do you hear that? What a fizz. S- yeah, it's nice. We do have to open up them ourselves. I feel like this is a running theme. We need a PA. Yeah, yeah we do. <laughs> of, of like consistently having to open up the, the drinks ourselves. I, I think I'm going to go straight from the bottle. Yeah, I think you might be right. It's yeah. a little, I'm just a little Old more school. hardcore, a little more real. <laughs> so, oh, thanks good. for joining us. Yeah. Um, you're currently in the middle of an arena tour supporting Busted. You played the O2 Arena last night. How, how was last night? How's the tour going? Tour's awesome. Um, you know, those guys... It kind of came about, they were making a record and they wanted to cover uh, one of our songs. They covered Umbop. And then after they did it, they're like, would you come out and support us? And it's, it's weird because they're, they're massive in the UK. I mean, we've never played 22 shows in one tour in the UK. So we were like, dude, absolutely. Yeah. And, and I think there's, there's camaraderie there. Like three guys in that band, they've, they've been through a couple decades of kind of really showing their true colors of who they are because they started pretty young and yeah. mm-hmm. we've been through three decades of that and, and so we've really enjoyed it. Really good. That's yeah. awesome. And we, were you guys playing Mbop together? We've played it every night with them together because yeah. it's on their record. We thought, hey, this is the best way to do this song. Yeah. Um, they want to play it in their set. We obviously want to play it in our set. Best to just do it together. And then um, we picked a song of theirs that we play together to most every night, uh, Slip With The Light On, which is great. It's just, you know, this is where, to me, like genre, I don't know what people think Hanson is. Like I had somebody come up to me uh, last night and they said, is this what Hanson is now? And I thought, well, I mean, I don't think anything's changed. Has it changed? But, you know, they're probably, Busted is pop punk and Hanson is pop rock and... Mm -hmm. 
else. Yeah. It doesn't really matter when you start singing. I mean, you you just find that from Alice Cooper, Def Leppard to ABBA, it just doesn't make that much a difference when you're in the studio. Mm-hmm. You yeah. Know? Did I see last night that you had Chris Stark, the radio DJ, come up and <laughs> yeah, perform? Yeah. That is insane. <laughs> yeah. I saw the clip this morning. Yeah, apparently he uh, had never performed on a stage ever. And so they're like, okay, your first gig is going to be with one of your favorite bands, plus Hanson, <laughs> right? And uh, it's going to be at the O2, and so good luck. <laughs> That's yeah. insane. I had no idea it was his yeah. first show ever. That's brilliant. Yeah. But I saw the clip he was playing acoustic yeah, guitar. Yeah, I saw it as well. Yeah, he was like practicing. He yeah. posted it maybe yesterday or the day before. He was like practicing like the chords of, of yeah, was it sleeping, sleeping yeah, with sleep light? Yeah, sleep with the light on. Yeah. Taylor was standing next to him. He said, hey, he looked great. No one could tell, but two feet away, the dude was shaking. Like, was he I singing mean, he, as well? Did he, did he sing? I... Do some BVs. There was a bit of looking with at With seven the vocals, I don't think oh, okay. you can tell yeah. who's singing. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I th- he was having a great time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, great absolutely. Great yeah. And the, the album went to number one, right? Which features yeah. Symbol. Yeah, yeah. Their album went to number one, which is cool. I mean, to see a band, you know, several decades into it, and, and all that stuff is driven. We were talking just before we started recording about, like, hardcore fan bases and how to create that connection with people that can, these days you can just be turned off, you know, like if Instagram or you go, Oh, you know what? Uh, you, today we're going to charge for that, you know? And you're like, mm. but I, but I spent years building this yeah. connection. Um, it's, you know, that's just driven by their hardcore fans, people who have like grown up with them, who were kids when they first started listening to busted yeah. and, and have stayed connected and they go, I'm not just going to buy one record. I'm going to buy five records. Yeah. I'm going to tell my mom and my kid and my best friend and my boss, hey, you need to buy this record. And that, like, getting back to that grassroots idea of not we're all social media influencers. You know, I'm, I'm mm-hmm. doing some sort of arm motion, if you guys can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> sure. like I'm some sort of fake human. Um, <laughs> but like I'm actually telling people what I... I'm really influencing people by like my actions and my money and my time. Like, yeah. I mean, we see that all the time at our shows. The amount of handsome tattoos is insane, right? It, it, you just, the amount of arms I've signed and people go, and this will be permanently on my arm tomorrow Whoa. is, it's almost getting normal, right? But when you think about what that is, people are going, you're so important to me. Like next to my, you know, daughter, so. Daughter, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, like like you are marked on my body forever because you cannot be removed from being important mm-hmm. to who I am. Like, yeah, that's that's next level. And of course, that's for us. That's I'm not saying everyone has to get a tattoo, but that's kind of the ultimate level. <laughs> yeah, if you uh, want to be, do you remember it? signing my arm back in 2005? <laughs> 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 this is why. Do you know what's funny? We we literally last week got the first message yeah, from a fan one. with a flaws tattoo. <laughs> Yeah, um, they got the, or it's certainly the first one to get the new album logo tattooed. Oh, yeah. wow. Um, I think there's been maybe one or two before, but yeah, that just came That's up. Awesome. And, uh, that was pretty neat. Yeah, was we don't good. even have that tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> I want it though. Yeah, it's actually you're, too close. you're too close to it. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. yeah, I'm on the album artwork anyway. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get my own face. It's like when people say, "Do you hang out like when you're not on the road? Like, do you guys hang out all the time?" I'm like. We spend 24 hours a day on tour together. No, we don't (laughs) hang out off the road. Not for a solid month. You know, yeah. I don't want to see you. I don't want to smell you. Yeah, I don't want to deal with your problems. Us literally just moved six hours drive away. Yeah. Bravo. Yeah. Bravo. I need my space. I yeah. need my time. But then I appreciate the time with the boys. Right, Helps right. you focus. But it's healthy, isn't it? Too? Yes. Yeah. Like you're not the same people. You don't need the same things. You don't need the same things for your creative process. Like I'll tell Taylor, our piano player, I'm like, you come in early and start because the way you write songs, like you want an extra two or three hours. And I'm like, let's get to it. Let's get to it. I'm a drummer. One, two, three, four, go. Yeah. You know? And so like, you've got to be able to let each other go, Hey, you're going to go late and I'm going to leave early. And that's not because you're hardworking and I'm not. That's because like we just do it different. And that's a big deal about finding the way to work together yeah. instead of yeah. work, just smashing every moment yeah six hours away <laughs> <laughs> six hours away exactly <laughs> yeah. um, so are there any are there any places um, that you're looking forward to to visiting on this tour oh 
let me think about this. We went to Liverpool for the mm-hmm. first time. Oh, really? Never been. Did you go so to all the Beatles museums? We did. Yeah, we did. <laughs> we're like, gosh, we're a bunch of stupid American tourists, but we, <laughs> we're going to the Cavern Club. We're going right now. Hey, we've all been. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I've yeah, not, it's... actually. Have, Have you not been? No, I've not. Next what? time. Next time we go. I did would, you enjoy it? Would I, you recommend? Here's what I would say is, as a music fan, you've just got to do it. Just It's like going to Graceland in the U.S. Yeah. You just got to go. We understand you're surrounded by a bunch of punters and they don't understand the reality of working your craft in a bar <laughs> three stories down in a dungeon. But still, you walk in and go, one, they were here. Two, wow, this is just like every other crappy bar I've ever been to. You know, like, yeah. and you just, I, it's important to, to like, I think still be a fan. Like when you forget to be a fan, you, you miss something about the art of making great music, those connections. Yeah. But yeah, Liverpool was great. We were just in Cardiff. We went to Cardiff Castle and acted like a bunch of fools and had a fun time. I know we're, we try and get out mm-hmm. a little bit and go, okay, let's just do something. So you remember, because touring can be so monotonous. Yeah. I mean, it's like touring, you know, back alleys and dumpsters. Like, oh, look. <laughs> Yeah, trash smells bad here too. <laughs> you know, like, look, we're in Buenos Aires. Yeah, still smells bad. You know, yeah. here we're in, uh, you know, uh, you know, different places use different spices in their food, so the trash smells a little different. But yeah. it all the Starbucks tastes the same. Yeah, yeah. Wherever, <laughs> wherever you go, and it always smells the same. We tease and call Starbucks the American Embassy. It's like that one thing you just go ah. Oh, there's there. There it is. American Embassy. We'll just walk over there, you know, check in. <laughs> um, but anyway, we try and get out and, and find something to do. Like, we'll, we'll go over to Trafalgar Square today, probably, just because we recorded one of our music videos there. Oh, okay. And you're like, you okay, it. let's mark some time. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Still the same. Okay, <laughs> cool. So you guys have been touring since the late 90s, I believe. Yeah. Um, yeah. Looks like you've been pretty much everywhere. Um, could you take us back to your earliest memories of touring? Maybe the, the first ever tour. Oh. Yeah, so we started... So you were six? I was, so I was six in 92 when we started. We got signed when I was 9, 10. And that is we insane. That's going to be a record. Nowhere, yeah, when I was 11. And we started touring... Um, Mostly sort of 97, 98 was when we were uh, doing our first tours uh, around the world. You know, it's, it's funny to do it as, as a kid. Like most people's stories are probably wild and girls and drugs yeah. and alcohol. Do you have your parents there? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. Of course. <laughs> Absolutely. It would have been like we illegal. No. Illegal. <laughs> <laughs> no. I was all on my own. Um, like one of my favorite things when we showed up in japan on a tour they had rented the suite next door and filled it with video games so it was like a and this is projection tvs right i'm gonna like dating myself like rgb projection big screen tv so it was like four and at the time you know there's a playstation and uh nintendo 64 and a, and i'd be like sweet yeah well, this um you know man our we really, really, really had screaming fans, right? Like screaming teenagers, Beatlemania, yeah, yeah. like reenacted. And probably the, my first memory of interacting was that we did, we did a performance at a mall and no one had any idea that 6,000 people were gonna show up. <laughs> so they set up a, a one foot stage with no barricades and a little PA on a stand, like two little speakers. And then they still wanted us to do it when 6,000 people showed up. And if you looked, I mean, the security guards, like the police officers that protected the mall we were at, their eyes were like the size of cantaloupes. Like, oh yeah. my God. So we walked out and it was fine because everyone was excited for us to be there. The problem was when you finish your performance and it's time to go, yeah. well, they don't want you to leave. And when 6,000 people don't want you to leave and there's no barricades and there's four police officers, you're in trouble. You are yeah. in big, big trouble. Uh, and I remember in that process, I mean, they're just dragging you by your arms while the fans are like grabbing you by your hair. But I fell and was on the ground being stomped on by like no 25 people. And then finally our tour manager just like sort of like, like God, like the door opened and Pops there was like the a light. 
and I'm reaching, I'm like, oh my God. And he just sort of grabs my hand and drug me out of the fans. And that was, that was our first experience with big crowds. I mean, we played at fairs and festivals, but little stuff. Yeah. You know, and this was the first time I'm like, oh my God, never going to do that again. Mm. And, and you're like, you're like crying, like, oh my God, I just died. And everyone's like, they love you. Like, no, they don't. I don't want them to love I don't me. like their love. <laughs> it, was, it was a very interesting mix of trauma and adulation. Yeah, that sounds scary. That's yeah. like involuntary crowd surfing, but like inverted crowd yeah, surfing. Inverted you crowd were... surfing. <laughs> yeah, don't do it. Don't do it. It's not good. It's not good. Yeah. So um, throughout those years, you must have had quite a, a varied rider. You mentioned video games. Oh, uh, yeah. Varied so could rider. you talk us through the Hanson rider? Is yeah, there anything what's... outrageous on there now versus then or then versus now? Let's see. Hanson rider, outrageous thing. So, yeah, probably... The, vid- the game, video games, right? Video games. I mean, every- I'm still, I carry a, a flight case with me just to play video games everywhere I go. That's sort of like, That's wicked. I have retained this part of being a child. I'm like, I'm sticking with it this many years in. My Xbox comes everywhere I go. But I mean, <laughs> I was going to say, how has it changed? But it sounds like it hasn't, it hasn't <laughs> changed. Yeah. It hasn't changed that much. I mean, beer is now on the rider. And whiskey is now on the rider. That wasn't on there when we started. But it's still pretty much like, you know, gosh, I'm going to sound so lame. Like, stuff to make a sandwich and, like... These are the essentials like, on the road. We like Sandwiches, y- beer, and whiskey. Come yeah, on, quite this, often. Is, yeah. <laughs> this is it. This is it, you know. There's, like, some candy. I don't know. Some M&Ms and some gum. We're boring. Gum's man. good. We, Gum's we need good. to add that. Basically, we, yeah, we're putting together like like the ultimate rider. So we're ah. basically stealing everyone's ideas. Oh, oh, and I don't think we have chewing I'm, gum on the chewing gum. No, it's, good, also, it's a good idea actually. Yeah. We also yeah. don't have an Xbox on the rider, so yeah. maybe we should put one of them on too. Yeah, if you'd like, I can you know just set you up a kit. You know, this yeah. is what you should carry. I mean, when we started off, I was so young. Like our whole family would travel, right? Just because yeah. even legally they had to yeah. travel as cars. So all my siblings, we're the oldest three of seven. Like there was probably diapers on the rider at some point for one of my little sisters. Wow. So that's probably that's, not that's on probably many riders. as well, yeah. Yeah. And just consider it. It could happen. Well, I suppose, yeah. I suppose if, if you're touring with kids, I've got a seven-month-old Freddie's about to have a baby. Like, you know, the yeah, idea of like touring, like adding diapers on isn't actually that far. Fetched. Stock up yeah. when you can, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get this pump. That, they're expensive, man. <laughs> they're they're so get expensive. An, a nanny on the rider as well. Get some childcare. A nanny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Crash. Oh my gosh, that's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> but actually, that's a great, like, even we're just, gonna... just for us, like we're adding on Na- we call them nappies. Yeah. Nappies to the to the rider just because they're so expensive. I feel like the uh, the show rep will be looking at us slightly strange. <laughs> it's like hummus, pitta, carrots, nappies, <laughs> water, <laughs> local beers, <laughs> nappies, <laughs> diapers, and hot nanny. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm giving myself ideas. I have five kids. I didn't even think about that. I could somehow like binge off the band. Yeah. Get free diapers. Stock up. <laughs> Might as well. So the beauty of um, live gigs is that um, not everything always goes yes. according to plan. Oh, my God. What would you... I mean, I, I imagine there's been plenty of things in, did you say, 30 years of touring. Yeah. What, what, what comes to mind as, as the most memorable or um, the, the, the craziest thing to happen on stage? Oh, I mean, for me, the most extreme moments as the drummer usually relate to power failures. I remember we were playing a, an arena show in Chicago years ago, and you have 15,000 people rocking out. And I don't know what went wrong. Somebody hit a breaker, and all of a sudden, everything turns off. And it was a five minute drum solo. Okay. Sick. Like, <laughs> because I'm the only instrument yeah. that yeah. can acoustically, acoustically still carry. Yeah. I am just. It's like, what do you do this is now? My moment. Yeah. What do you do, <laughs> John Bonhamit, baby? <laughs> you know, uh, that was very memorable because it was one of those things where you're like, I'm not prepared there for this. Like, I didn't think this through. This is a long time to just to entertain bump. people without some thought process. <laughs> you know, people, oh, just play the drums. It's not like that. Okay, <laughs> it's not just play a beat. It's like a progression. Anyway. I did my best. It came back on, and then uh, 
this is when you you become really glad you've been in a band for a long time because everybody is <laughs> one, two, three, and we're back. You know, uh, yeah. And but then that it was, looks like it was planned as well. Yeah, it's all part of the show. Yeah, no, nobody thought this was. <laughs> nobody thought this was planned. When I first started drumming, um, and I still have this drum set. I'm so glad I was able to buy it later in life. But uh, I started with an old Ludwig '60s drum set, and as they do the hardware was just worn out by the 90s yeah you know i play a 70s ludwig now yeah and like that the acrylic bonham setup but yeah. everything is you you can't tighten anything too much because if you tighten it too much it's gonna go <laughs> yeah. yeah it's you know exactly what i'm talking gentle. about do you have the little sort of angle iron legs yeah. on yours yeah exactly so which are at the angle and obviously you kicking a kick drum forward and they're going no <laughs> <laughs> we need the visual aid <laughs> guys just just imagine like a twig trying to hold up a house yeah. Yeah. so i i'm drumming at this point this is really early i'm probably nine when we start when this happened and we're playing maybe our third gig with instruments because we started off just singing a cappella, right yeah. our first several years as a band were just as a vocal group and I'm kicking I mean I'm kicking like I'm trying to break the drum head because yeah, I'm as, nine as I do and those Go legs ahead. just went <laughs> boop right <laughs> and the drum just rolled sideways <laughs> off the stage oh no <laughs> <laughs> just right in front of me just boop <laughs> <laughs> you know, thank you good night <laughs> you, know, you know you can imagine like like uh, someone in a play and the set just falls over and behind you see the techs who are building it. You know. yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh, there's, oh, the drummer's there. Oh. And of course, when you're nine behind a full size 22 inch kick, they really can't see you. Yeah. So it, I, it really was a reveal. Like, oh, there's a drummer back there. <laughs> anyway, that's probably the most extreme I can think. Uh -huh. I mean, people have been shocked on stage and. Um, oh, electric had a, shock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean,. When you're playing in Brazil, sometimes they're just not wired the same way, you know. Uh, we had a show in Florida years ago where somebody thought it would be a good idea to set two-foot subwoofers uh, along the front of the whole stage with no barricades. We're like, that looks surprisingly like a really big step onto the stage, doesn't it? Nobody thought about that until this was a smaller room. It's probably about 3,000 people. Like, one fan jumped on about five songs in. Security pulled her off. Two more fans, about three more songs in, and we're like, "Oh crap!" <laughs> and about 300 people jumped on stage oh, at the same time, and we just stopped and ran out well, the I'm back not door. No more inverted crowd surfing. No, thank you. No, no. This was like this was like drop your instruments and bolt off the back of the stage while 300 people run across the stage behind you down the ramp through the back. And we just went straight to a van that was in the loading dock, got in and drove off. It was like World War Z. Like you could see people like <laughs> pouring out. Get in the van! Everything was in slow-mo. They're gonna kill you! <laughs> yeah. The was... texts are there rolling the drum kit to try and ball them away. <laughs> <laughs> like skill. <laughs> I, I went to see um, Limp Biscuit play. It was at Puckle Pop Festival in uh, Belgium. Yeah. And there was a point in the set where Fred Durst was like, oh, it's my birthday today. I want to invite, like, you know, all the women in the crowd. I want you to come on the stage. <clears throat> so it was, it was maybe like 30,000 people uh, there and all the women just started going on the stage. Uh, and then basically out of nowhere, um, a guy... So there's probably about, I don't know, 200 <laughs> women on the stage and there was a guy on the stage and Fred yeah. Durst like stopped the song and he was like, you're a dude. Like, what are you doing on the, on the stage? Um, and then literally, I'm going to say 30,000 people just started booing this one guy being like, who do you think you are? Like, get off the stage, get off, like boo, boo. Um, and, you know, and then he finally like came off the stage. Um, mm. And anyway, um, fast forward 10 years later, I, I used to be a session musician and, and we were on tour somewhere. We've got a new tour manager. Um, and he was saying, you know, it was like, oh, one, one time I was, I, was, um, I was working for this band and um, I was watching Limp Bizkit side of stage putting all of our equipment away. Um, and I just saw everyone just like run on the stage. 
Um, and uh, I was like, oh, I can just go on the stage. So I walked to the front of the stage and all of a sudden, 30,000 people started booing me. And I was like, I was booing you. <laughs> I was like, I was in the crowd. I, I was there, I booed you're the you. <laughs> you're the guy. <laughs> and he, he just missed the bit about like inviting all the women up on stage. He just thought it was just like, oh, you know, everyone, like a free for all. So he just walked on right, the stage right. and all of a sudden, Wow. <laughs> <laughs> on the flip side of all of the, the drummers falling off stage, what would you consider your career highlight or thing you're most proud of? Oh. Maybe if someone was to say, meet you in a bar, not knowing what you do, what would you right. say? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a hard one because there's a lot. I mean, continuing to be a band three decades in and, and be a writer and write more songs, you kind of have to always be, I feel like, pretty future focused. If you think too much about what you've done you might quit because you're like I did it all <laughs> you know, maybe I'll be a carpenter it's literally my life <laughs> <laughs> the uh, and we just did um, a performance for CBS in the US because they were celebrating the 50 years of the Beach Boys and that was pretty awesome I mean, it's a pretty epic group of people but one of the coolest things for me was after the show's over and the, the still living members of the band coming backstage and you're standing there and you're going, I grew up listening to these guys, right? I grew up and th this is now my peer group, right? The, the peer group is like, here's, uh, let me think of who is in this group. Michael McDonald's standing there. Take Six is standing there. Um, you know, Mike Love and... Uh, Brian Johnson and, and uh, you know, like Brian Wilson and like all these guys, that's this group. And it just keeps going, the list, you know, my morning jacket's there. And you kind of go, okay, okay, this is, this is a different thing. Like this is, we're no longer fighting to be heard and make an impact. Now you're sitting with like masters of their craft, right? People, and you're going, how did you master it? What, what part of it do you have that I have yet to, to discover? And it's a very different kind of conversation. And that's not maybe something that you get to share with the world, like standing on stage or having a big record, but it's the kind of stuff where you, you finally stop paddling, worrying that you're like trying to make it and you just go, oh, here we all are. Okay. Okay. But now we got to make something here. Yeah. really, really good <laughs> yeah. because these guys are watching. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. We had a fairly similar answer in a recent episode, um, but just kind of the idea of being acknowledged and appreciated by people that you've always looked right. up to. Right. Like that's got to be such a great feeling. Oh, yeah. I mean, and, and to the, the quality of writing and skill at, at that level is like, um, I know for us, Vocals is a big deal, right? The blend of brothers. And so the Beach Boys was a, a big thing. I mean, yep. brothers and cousins. And, and you hear that and you go, this is special. Like, this is something. E even great musicians, if you're not gifted with a brother who also likes to sing, you just can't live double track yourself the way. Yeah, hearing that mastery of, of vocals and um, it was Take Six and Michael McDonald practicing Don't Worry Baby. Just such a great melody. Don't worry, baby. Don't worry, baby. Everything will turn out. Anyway, I'm not going to keep singing because it's early, but <laughs> such a great melody. And then to hear them singing it in six-part harmony yeah. was like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I quit. I quit. <laughs> I'm giving up. I need two more brothers, three more brothers. <laughs> There you go. Anyway. So um, what is the craziest, uh, maybe not craziest, what is the most memorable thing okay. that a fan has ever gifted you? Mm. Either at a show or after a show or in the mail. If so they have the your tattoos, is, the, the, having the multiple tattoos <laughs> yeah, is pretty, that, I mean, tattoos, that's pretty mental. <laughs> tattoos, but they can't give that to you, yeah. right? You don't get Here's to go my home arm. with their arm, right? <laughs> That'd be weird. That would be weird. Um, somewhat close. Years ago, a fan showed up with a glass box and inside it was a horribly rotten decayed apple and she said taylor you bit out of this apple 
<laughs> that's so I, creepy. I got into the backstage and and saved it. Could you sign this apple? <laughs> And it was like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, that is pretty creepy, although I, I just remembered a, sto- a sto- story. Um, so I'm really into my tennis. And yeah. um, uh, Roger Federer played, like, his last ever game, like, last year in oh, London. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I had a friend that was working for the ATP. Um, and he said when he left, he left, like, all these, like, headbands. Mm-hmm. Um, but he left, like, a, it was, like, like four or five of them. <laughs> yeah. And my mate just, like, was like, well, I'm taking them. And he gave me one. I was like, you know, <laughs> this was Roger Federer's. And I'm like, am I that fan? <laughs> That's yeah. the headband JC's got on today. Yeah. I'm sorry here's we don't have a visual he aid. Never, <laughs> here's a question. Did you sniff it? This, he never wore it. He never actually okay. wore it. He, it was just, it was in, it, he had like five spare. Okay. And it was the five that okay. he didn't use. But you didn't answer the question. So Did you th- sniff it? I haven't opened it yet. It's funny it's that still, that, that still, feel, still, it still feels special, even though he didn't use it. It's like, exactly. This is one that he almost yeah, used. He, it was in his bag. He yeah. considered using it. <laughs> That must be worth a fortune. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, Zach, why didn't you finish the apple? That's outrageous, an apple. No, no, it was rotten. It was, it was decaying. It was like, like, like worms. That is weird. Was it, it like set in resin? Or was it, was it just in like this? That would have been a better idea. Yeah, fun if you're listening. <laughs> set it in resin. Could have preserved fun it. Fun if you're listening. Have you still got it? <laughs> Being real, some fans are scary. Some, <laughs> we can edit that. That's a quote right like, there. Like, you start to develop this sixth sense of like, that one's going to kill me. <laughs> right? Okay. I'm not, you know, like, like you start to read people. Some people are like, okay, this one's coming in for a hug. You know, or, or whatever. I let you go. Know, the you know. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get trumpled. Zach, I love you. No, I love you, love you. Oh, what is it? What does love you, love you mean? No, 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 it's not going, no, no, let go, let go, that's my butt. Um, Pretty. This was one of those, re, 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 danger, 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 danger kind of moments. Yeah. Yeah, so I didn't look as close, I, I looked close enough to be like, oh my God, that's an apple that's rotting. I heard the story and I just kind of went, I, th- I was probably looking at the security guard going, help, Yeah, I was going to say, help. do you have like a secret call for the security guard? I was like, cuckoo. Yeah, yeah. Code word. <laughs> Get I'm going to work. <laughs> yeah. We have a, like a, a song word. called Weird. Maybe we should just incorporate that. Man, this song, this, you remind me of weird. <laughs> Weirdo. <laughs> So we, uh, you've already mentioned um, about um, travel days already going to going to Liverpool. Um, we in Floors, we love a good travel day. We love a yes. good travel day story. Yes. Um, when we say travel day, what what would come to mind as as the most memorable travel day um, day off oh. on tour? Well, we ha- on our last tour, you know, this whole EU UK thing kind of messed up some of the yeah. bus drivers. They're not used to having to. Like do the customs with gear the way, yeah, and so it's a lot harder now. When we came into the UK, they did not do our carnet, which is like the the tax oh. documents properly. Yeah. So by the time we got to Switzerland, oh Switzerland, oh, Ooh. literally just they lit. finally like like four countries had been like it's fine, don't worry about it. Not Switzerland. Switzerland was like mine, <laughs> <laughs> you will not get down. <laughs> um, and so we're sitting there, and we had a gig in Paris in like just a few hours, right? And we're waiting, and we're waiting, and we're waiting, and they wouldn't let us travel through the country to get to Paris. It's about six hours before the gig, maybe, and somebody goes, we, just, we can't take the bus. And you go, well, what do you do? We're not gonna cancel the gig. We had to unload the whole, all the gear onto a train, arrive, oh and gosh. order Ubers. Ubers to carry all the gear. The Ubers wouldn't take it, so then we ordered a bus. The bus went to the wrong train station. We threw all the gear on the bus. This was like, I mean, it was two trains, failed Ubers, right? We showed up 40 minutes before the gig and played it on time. And it was just, it was like one of those moments where you're like, this is just, this is how friendships are made. You're all looking at each other going, but we did it together. Yeah. You know, kind of, uh, that wasn't as good a story, <laughs> but it was, it, was, it was a great memory. We are now going to ask for a touring top tip or any, I guess, cool ideas that you would pass on to musicians looking to, to follow <clears throat> music. Touring. 
top tip. Maybe something you couldn't live without. Or uh, I want to say something like really smart and great. You know, like always do vocal warm ups. This is a bad idea. This is lame. Um, pack twice as much underwear as you think you need. This is what I would say because you can wear everything else sweaty and gross, but <laughs> just it's just uh, that's that's the way. That's what. I, that's how I roll. That's, that's how I roll. That's a good one. Twice as many. Because you need them. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Um, you feel brand new with a fresh pair on. Let's be honest. <laughs> Even with a fresh pair, going to bed is sometimes quite nice. Yeah. Yes, yeah. It's two or eight yeah. So three times as much. <laughs> <laughs> two, for, <laughs> two in the day. One for the one day. One for the night. <laughs> one for the show. Going on sh- on stage that's with a fresh true. pair of boxes. Yeah. It's, it's I good, think. I good think feeling too. Yeah, I feel like I should have something better than that. That's what I got. That's underwear just, comes up. A, a few people put underwear on the rider, didn't they? Like, that's one of the top tips we've had before, mm-hmm. whether you get fresh underwear on your rider, refreshed. Oh. I mean, diapers kind of touches it's base similar. on that, but yeah. Yeah. more <laughs> adult diapers. Uh. <laughs> um, all right, so we are going into my favorite section now. Oh, my God. So this is the beef section, <laughs> where you're able to air any beef, that you may or may not have had. You can name names. You can not name names. But any music industry beef throughout your career. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, music industry oh, beef. Oh, yeah. Or, uh, or other beef. Any kind of beef. Uh, let me we think just, about this. We just want this. some juicy goss, really. Yeah. Uh, beef. Who, who should I... Who do I pick? <laughs> who do I pick? Yeah. I mean, some of our beefs have definitely been, like, documented in the world. Like, right. we have a documentary about the making of our third album. And, and people see, like, all the record industry people that were just making fools of themselves. Um, biggest beef. Biggest beef. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with this one. We did some recording with a producer named John Shanks. He, he was very successful. But it was like a classic, not a good combo of personalities. Right. Uh, we were recording with John, of all things, right during 9-11 in the U.S. It's kind of heavy topic. And because of that, we had gone out and bought a 20-foot American flag and hung it in the studio while we were recording. And we were just, you know, everybody in solidarity. Such a hard time recording. When we got to the end of that session, John stole the American flag. Whoa. And we're like, hey, John, where's the American flag? We want to go put it in our studio in Oklahoma. What American flag? He denied it. He denied it. Oh, my God. That's, that's John bold. Shanks stole our American flag. That's illegal, surely. You know, and in one sense, I want to be like, you're a patriot. You probably wanted to hang it up in your studio. Mm. But it's theft. It's it theft. was not right. It was not right. It that was not is right. Not cool. And to it this was... day, does he still is he still adamant? I have mean, I been... haven't asked him again. You know, after several denials, it just. Have you ever driven past this house before? <laughs> <laughs> just, like, yeah. just steal it back. It's just wrapped. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, this is the this is the final um, section. Um, this is the the quick fire round. Oh God. Um, so it's it's basically you, you you can you can either reply with with a single word or you can you can dwell on it you can you can tell us a little anecdote Ruminate. Um, but 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 normally it would be the, the lines of when i say chair you I, say table okay i've not used that one before that's the first <laughs> i usually go the dog and cat route so whatever okay, comes just, to mind just whatever comes to mind okay, got yeah. it i'm going to so, close my eyes and just exactly try and try and visualize <laughs> um, so when we say wisconsin state fair you say Cheese curds. <laughs> Cheese curds. There we go. Cheese curds. Do you, do you want to leave it at that and we can just <laughs> maybe explain? I kind of like just leaving it. Okay, let's <laughs> yeah. If you don't know, Wisconsin State Fair means cheese curds. It's guys, you got to go to the Wisconsin State Fair. That's all I'm saying. It's slang, right? Yeah. Kind of Wait, it, did yeah. Wikipedia tell you something about me related to cheese curds, or did you just <laughs> cheese type cheese in? Cur- with, that's uh, the answer wait, that no, it came up with. It came. It said that it said that that was one of like your main first like gigs supporting Tom Jones. That's what it said. But I was like... <laughs> that nev- never. That never, never really happened. happened. Oh, what, no. So that didn't Fact happen on Saturday, it. August the 10th, <laughs> 1996? There. Exclusive sips, 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 sips. Cheese curds. I don't... <laughs> Explain man, the cheese curds. I, I don't cheese. remember ever supporting Tom Jones. <laughs> I feel like I would remember that. I feel like that would have been in a story 
Wikipedia earlier. is famously a trustworthy I source. Also, yeah, exactly. I Why also we- feel like I would have learned something really awesome from Tom Jones, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> don't, don't, I mean, like he would have been like, hey kid, uh, you know, <laughs> let me tell you about how to get the hottest ladies or something, you know, like, <laughs> you know, oh, uh, sex hmm. bomb and all that. I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next one, when we say mm, bop, I say hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> How many times do you think that you've performed that song in your career? Oh, a lot. I mean, I'm going to say, I'm going to say a couple thousand times. Actually, you're wrong. Say, it's it's yeah. 1,347. <laughs> yeah, 1,347. Uh, yeah, I mean, that song, we have amazing fans and and songs that have had huge connections but that song became bigger than a song yeah i mean it's it's like it's one of those songs that gets put in lists that are like you know most influential songs of a decade or of a genre yeah Yeah. it just and it's this weird thing i think it's because i mean talking about it for a minute so the song is all about loss right it's all about the fact that most things in life won't last and you better decide now as in when you're young or in the as the moment you're in what you're going to pursue who who you're going to hold on to because they're going to be gone and most things won't matter mm. well when you sing about that and it was written when i was eight right and we were already experiencing being a band required us to lose friendships lose connection to other people be working on weekends when other kids were going to birthday parties like we were going like okay we're doing this I think there was just a lot of reality in that song wrapped in the love of pop music, right? Mm-hmm. Wrapped in listening to vocal groups and doo-wop bands from the 50s and 60s. And you just, it kind of, it's this perfect little combo that we somehow stumbled into, you yeah. know, by writing our real life and then emulating our biggest love, which is, you know, 50s and 60s rock and roll. It's yeah. like a, it's a thing. It's like a it's feeling, its own, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's its own word. You know what I mean? Like, it's in the dictionary. Oh, is it in the dictionary? Well, I mean, I don't know. It is now. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> if you can say it, you know. Well, exactly. Uh, um bop, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it means a frame of time, by the way. It means oh, cool. in an um bop, in a, oh. in a instant. It's a very wise perspective from an eight-year-old. It's seriously impressive. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that was the 11-year-old talking, because Isaac was, well, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. You know, life is short. Mm. Go for it. Yeah. That's, that's, you know, I I met my wife when I was 15 and I tell everybody like, don't wait on stuff like that. This is the, the most important things that you will do are not your job or your dream. It's the people that will help you realize your dreams, right? Like two hands are good. Four hands are better, right? This is, this is the stuff that you got to dig into and the other stuff may or may not come. That's the one thing that you can really control, like who you surround yourself with, mm-hmm. you know. So we were lucky to, you know, naturally have a band, naturally have people around that cared and knew and complimented each other, you know, mm-hmm. different Ninja Turtles. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a Raph and a Leo and yeah. Michelangelo, you know. That's wicked. Shredder? Like Was there a Shredder? <laughs> 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 Good point. Yeah, that's our younger brother. <laughs> okay, so when we say three CG records, you say? Yeah, I say uh, Three Car Garage. That's the name of our record label because, I don't know, we were young when we named it. We're three guys who started playing rock and roll in a garage, so it was a three car garage. I, I don't know. It must have sounded exotic or like <laughs> really wealthy when, you know, oh, we have a three car garage. Not one or yeah. two, it's three. It doesn't stand for three cute guys. So that means we can use that name for our next record, yes, right? Yes, yeah. <laughs> and now, new from Flaws, three cute guys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when we say back to the island, <laughs> okay. you say... Uh, back to the island, we, I say uh, party on the beach. This is, uh, we've been doing it for about 10 years. It's a destination concert event, only open to our Hanson.net paying members mm-hmm. that uh, basically they take their vacation with us and we play... Gosh, I mean, each brother will play a solo show, and then we usually play three um, full band concerts at the same time over the week. And so it's like the only place you're ever going to go and hear over 100 songs unrepeated, 
right in one week of concerts like we, we try and not play any song more than oh wow once so like some songs you'll hear for the first time or never performed on stage except for at that moment because because wow. you're going okay here's 125 songs you know that is an boom, exclusive boom, boom. yeah <laughs> that's yeah, it's, wicked yeah, it's really fun, really fun. And and it's amazing. We have fans who come to every single year, so we're about to do our, our 11th year in January. And it's it's just, it's a really special event. I mean, if you can afford to do it, not everybody can go to Jamaica once a year. I wouldn't go if I wasn't in the band. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know like, uh, like, uh, but it's it's pretty fun. And is it always in Jamaica or does, does it move? We have done it uh, once in Mexico, uh, but it's always, almost always been in Jamaica just because um, finding what, what we're looking for is like a place that still feels connected and small enough to kind of like you, you don't want to be in like some mega complex. Mm-hmm. You want to be in a place that feels like you're at a special destination. And so finding that right size, Jamaica has more resorts kind of in that what is it, maybe 400 rooms right. kind of size. Um, and so um, that's been really good for us. Yeah, because it keeps it intimate, but also yeah. you can probably get some privacy as well at some stage. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, I mean, yes, for us to have a, it's not a, it's not a vacation for us because we're playing every day, but that's fun for us. Yeah. I mean, we like this job. You don't keep doing it yeah, yeah, yeah. if you don't enjoy the grind of playing shows and rehearsing and all that stuff. But, um, yeah, I mean, fans have said, why don't you do it in the south of France? Why don't you do it in Australia? Like, we're lucky that we have fans all over the world that want, want us to do that. But some of those places are pretty expensive. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, we're going to do it in, you know, it's the Venice shows. Yeah. I don't think this is, this is not cheap. This is not, you know, Just affordable blame it on, for Just blame it on the carne. So yeah. now the yeah. rules have changed. Switzerland. Now just, <laughs> it's too <laughs> good. Just, we were yeah. going to do it in Switzerland, but it's yeah. not. Yeah, the ski bunny event would be awesome, except for one member of the band would hit a tree and die, and it would be, become a memorial concert series. And, oh, no. oh, all ballads all the time. <laughs> well, you'd still you'd still carry on playing. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, Just yeah. play ballads. Yeah, yeah, no. And following on from that, when we say Isaac and Taylor, <laughs> I say replaceable. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. In all seriousness, I was having a conversation with. My, I have a, a, a brother who is also a musician who's 10 years younger than I am. So he wasn't even born when we started the band. But he does some music and he's out with us right now um, just as a hanging out and doing stuff. And uh, I was looking at a video of Taylor's oldest son, who's 20, and Isaac's oldest son, who is 17. And me and my younger brother were like, that's really creepy because that just looks like Isaac and Taylor. Like we could probably just switch him out. <laughs> like, like, I mean, people would be confused because how did you get a 20 years younger version of yeah. your exact same brothers? <laughs> but it's, it's cloning boys. It's cloning. <laughs> it's crazy. Voices, facial features, strong genes. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We're going to finish on a deep one. When we say Zach Hansen, you say, uh, problematic. No. Um, <laughs> what would I say? Man, I don't want to talk about myself. You guys put people on the spot at the end of every episode. <laughs> yes. um, video gamer, drummer, weird guy, likes Coca-Cola and talking. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There Thank you. Go. Wow, <laughs> what an ending. Um, Zach, thanks so much um, f- for yeah. being here. Um, and, and yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed that. Um, and hope the rest of the tour goes well. Oh, it's going to be terrible. Um, <laughs> <laughs> are you, are you, have you got a show tonight? Uh, no, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah, this is the peak. We're going downhill from here. Okay. Uh, not because I want it to go bad, but I've just realized I don't have enough good stories, so I need to make some really bad choices. Okay. So that for the second interview in season we'll three, back, yeah. uh, I, pff, it's going to be wicked. Yeah, right. it's going to be wild. <laughs> awesome. Well, we'll see you in Jamaica. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. In the hotel A huge thanks to Zach for being part of the podcast today and for bringing the energy at 11am and to the Westminster Hotel Bar in London for having us on our last episode of Series 2. We couldn't do this podcast without you guys listening, so a huge thanks to you for being part of the Floors family. If you do like what you hear, then let us know. There's nothing better than getting a little DM or message saying how much you enjoyed a certain story or how our sultry tones help bring to life an otherwise long and boring morning commute for you. 
Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe anywhere and everywhere you can, because it's all about that algorithm. You can find us most places at Meet at the Hotel Bar or on meetatthehotelbar.com. It really does make so much difference for us, an independent podcast, in trying to climb those big, bad podcast charts. Join us next time on... Meet at the-